and welcome to the Rosie O'Donnell Show. Thank you for coming. I'm Rosie. And today's topic is women. Sarah Silverman, how do you feel about being a woman? What do you love about it? I don't love it. <laughs> I'm a Jewish woman, so I have to start shaving at 4 o'clock for an 8 o'clock date. <laughs> Wanda Sykes, oh, you know what I love about being a woman? <laughs> Is you could actually think with the head that's on your shoulders. <laughs> Amy Schumer. Oh my God, you guys, I can't, I don't know. I don't think I'm pretty enough to be on this panel of amazing women. <laughs> Joan Rivers. Oh, shut up, you taught. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi. A am I a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so this, is, this here is Robin Williams live from heaven. Oh boy, well, you know, it's me, Robin, up here live in heaven. Oh, looking down at earth, all the things happening. Look, oh, Donald Trump runs for president. Look, folks, frankly, all right, we're gonna build a wall, really, all right? It's gonna be a big deal, and frankly, it's gonna be huge, all right? Oh, boy, well, I wonder what Obama thinks of that. Uh, if uh, Donald Trump uh, <laughs> becomes president of America, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> oh, no, oh, well, you know, oh, oh, well, you know, we got Chris Rock hosting the Oscars, eh? I can't a black man get a nomination, man. <laughs> Cause the actor's not acting enough. Cause the director's not directing enough. <laughs> oh, no, oh, uh, my old pal Bill Cosby, oh, he's going to jail. Oh, well, I wonder if he's still doing stand-up. Well, you know, you're in the shower, and you're soaping, and you're doing the soap, and you're thing, and you're feeling yourself, and then you don't want to drop the soap, because then the bad things are going to happen. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So, first question, Cosby impression. Yeah. How long have you had it? Uh, since, I mean, that was one of, like, probably the first ones I'd ever done. I mean, that's a classic, you know, Cosby. How has it changed over the years? <laughs> well, I definitely have a lot more uh, material uh, as of late. Um, the thing with Cosby is that it kind of went out of style. It would almost be considered, like, a hack impression until, unfortunately, you know, the whole, you know, rape thing. And uh, now he's relevant again, so yeah. Your impression gets to gets your impression is the only winner in that. Yes. <laughs> uh, so guys, talk talk to me about how you got involved in the, in this show. You know, obviously it's a contestant-based show, it's a competition show. Yeah. Um, did you audition for it? Did you send a tape? Um, yeah, we did send a tape. I think it was 60 or 90 seconds or something like that. The producers requested it. And um, just a, as many impressions as you can do. And, um, and then they said that, yeah, come on the show and it'll be a lot of fun. And it really was. When did you guys first notice that you were good at impersonating other people? Or was it something that you just attempted to be, like you saw somebody else doing it and you said, oh, I want to do impressions, I'll teach myself, I'll learn how to do it. Or did you sort of notice that you had a knack for it very early on? We were just talking about this in the green room. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess since we were little, yeah, we were just talking about it. Uh, I, the first impression I ever did was actually Weekend at Bernie's 2, Bernie, when it comes back to life in front of the my- The dancing? Y yeah. That, and then, but that was like a, a visual one. And then I guess like third grade watching Saturday Night Live, uh, the 2000 election, that's what really, I, I started doing like George Bush and Al Gore like in school. And that's, yeah. Wow. What does your Al Gore impression consist of? <laughs> well, Al Gore, I mean, I haven't done that one in a while, but <laughs> Bush has a little more, uh, <laughs> oh, oops, okay. He's got a swagger. How you guys doing? Yeah, a little uh, Texas frat boy, daddy's a millionaire. <laughs> 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 How you doing? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just was doing them since I could really talk. I would always mimic everybody on the playground and every movie I saw. I you know, would watch The Wizard of Oz and repeat you know, all the munchkins. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. You know, <laughs> never going home, mother. You know, just all those things. And uh, just repeat everything I heard. And uh, what was it like doing these impressions for Dana Carvey, who's kind of the, the king? The Master of Disguise. If you doesn't have a movie called fun. The Master of Disguise. Like a, like a dream come true. Yeah. It sounds corny, but it's true. Well, yeah, here's somebody who's been on SNL who has some of the greatest impressions of all time. To, uh, to hear him compliment you and be sincere about it is, it's, it's like incredible. It's yeah. surreal, you know? I mean, you won last night, right? Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Pretty fantastic. Thank you. What do you think your, your what do you think closed the deal for you? Uh, I don't know what I, what I the one I 
enjoyed watching the with Tracy Morgan. That's one I had fun with, and I, I was just I just kept screaming I was gonna get people pregnant, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm gonna get you pregnant, girl. Dirty rock, we call it dirty rock. So, yeah. <laughs> and your your episode is next week, right? Tuesday night, yeah. Well, who? What is the most difficult impression that you have? The one that you still get nervous when you do? Difficult? It would have to be Joan Cusack because it's brand new and not a lot of people know who she is. She was in the Adams Family and on Shameless. But it's a hard one because not everybody would identify me. I am a Joan Cusack fan, and that really? is a very good Joan Cusack Thank impression. Thank you so much. Yeah. It, I always found the Joan Cusack impression to be similar to the Drew Barrymore impression, but like the mouth one, goes the, the other way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Joan Cusack mouth goes up. Oh. Drew Barrymore mouth goes down. Yes, it's like more California down mouth lithby kind of thing. I can't do Drew Barrymore. <laughs> there are there are certain actors and actresses or celebrities that I feel like lots of impersonators have impressions of because they are they have such a specific way of talking or, or behaving, very specific behavioral traits. Do you find yourselves like leaning towards wanting to do those because people will know that impression right away or leaning towards not wanting to do those because so many others other people have that impression? Well, with a girl, I think it's different because not a lot of women do impressions, period. So I don't... I have to repeat what I hear and what's in my head and what I'm able to do, no matter whether people are gonna like it or not. Like my best impression is probably that old lady from the Goonies, but no one cares. And it's amazing. You know, you like, mean throw mama from the train. Oh, man, you know, fat boy. You know, but like who cares? <laughs> I told him to give oh. me the social lunch. He got me the unsocial lunch. What are you talking about? Who cares? That has gotten the biggest reaction. That impression is amazing. It's a crazy voice. But, like, I think for a guy, like, it's, it, you want to avoid the walk-ins, the De Niro's. Maybe. Yeah, do anything that's been done a million times, it's sort of like, you know, like Jay Moore, that's walking, it's yeah. been taken. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Any, anybody I like, you know, I think, I think we both, like, you, you impersonate things or people that you like, you, you know? You just got to do it. Yeah. yeah. It's difficult to... to sort of gets like imitate someone that you don't really like or respect because it's like the the it's, the passion isn't there and then it just falls well, or it could, could just become mean like the if you don't like or respect the person that you're impersonating you could well yeah i noticed like like you, you see a lot of people doing trump and it's like obviously he's you know he's trump and it's like they're like well fuck this guy but it's like you can't come at it from a fuck this guy perspective because then you're not cuz he is like i love me you know what I mean? Right. So it's hard to be like, well, this guy's a fucking ass, because it's like, you don't, his essence is cockiness. So you need to be like, you know, and I, I it, there's certain things that like you see, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, you got like, admire his ability to sell himself. So it's like, ah, I kind of, and I play off that. You have to be a self loving douchebag. Yes. You Trump. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do the throw mama from the train voice again for me, please? <laughs> I told him to get me the salted nuts. He got me the unsalted nuts. The unsalted nuts make me choke. <laughs> that is for every AOL employee sitting at their desk out there and wondering what's going on in here. What is your most esoteric impression? What is an impression that you found that you do that just nobody gets or, or knows who that person is that you still sort of love like an abandoned child? Um, hmm. I don't know. Mo most of the ones I do are pretty mainstream. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I pretty much do people that. Yeah. What's your What's your toughest impression that you have? I'd say Obama is difficult to maintain. Like he's very like. Uh, now we uh, need to do uh, is sign a bill. Uh, now it's not going to be easy. Uh, but it doesn't need to be hard, you know? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. But he, he is kind of difficult to maintain just because it's like some come super easy. Like Trump is easy. It's like, look, folks, it's going to be huge, okay? Frankly, believe me, okay? But Obama is literally more like hitting notes, and he has so many specific cadences and stuff that it's a little more difficult. Right, he kind of goes up and down. Yeah. And, and there's like speech Obama, which is like, uh, yes, uh, we can, uh, and yes, we will. And then there's like talking Obama, like, uh, now, Bill, uh, we need to do is uh, take a look at the uh, situation uh, and uh, figure out uh, what to do, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's different, yeah. 
Rachel, what's your most difficult impression that you have? Uh, my most difficult impression is Whoopi Goldberg, and only because <laughs> it's taxing on my vocal cords, but I like to do it. You know what I mean? I like to do it so much, but the day after, I'm in a lot of pain, and that's when I vape. I just smoke weed all day. <laughs> And try to get fired from The View. That's what... Fart on The View and try to get fired from The View because I can't stand Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Thank you. Do they not get along, Rosie? And, and what... There's rumblings. I don't know anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so when you were a teenager, were you guys doing impressions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were they, did they go over well in the house or not well in the house? A lot of times impressions are just sort of the perfect mediator between anything going on in your household. Yeah, I got picked on a lot as a kid, and so the, the impressions sort of offset that, and I was like, if I could just let, make them laugh, maybe they'll leave me alone. <laughs> Not my family, <laughs> although they did make fun of me too. But the kids, and um, yeah, my, I was always cracking up my father. Like, he loved Kenny Rogers and the Bee Gees, and I would do all those impressions for him, and he was a great audience. So, yeah, it, it met well with me. Uh, yeah, I mean, my family, I don't know, they'd be like, yeah, okay, but then I'd go to school and they'd, they'd love it in school, but at home they'd be like, well, okay, you do your bed, you know, like, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> teachers an... loved it too, right? The teachers. Oh, yeah, they, they yeah. actually did, I actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but your family just didn't give shit about your impression. No, no, that's not, they're very supportive and loving and they're great, but it was just, you know. We didn't know what to do with this kid. <laughs> yeah. He's a weirdo. You know, it's like, they already love me, you know? <laughs> I wanted everybody else to love me. This is getting sad. <laughs> love us, please, please. <laughs> I've always found that for impressionists, it's about finding this sort of frame where you can do all of the impressions in sort of one scenario. You yeah. know, like you see Jay Farrow on SNL recently, his last two bits have been like, oh, there was a meeting of all of the major rappers in the world, and then he does that meeting, or a meeting of all the, 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 the top black comics in the world, and he does that. How uh, difficult did you guys find it when you were first, so you had all these impressions in a bag, but you didn't really have a sort of place to put all of them uh, on the scene? Yeah, I say, yeah, certainly, uh, Rachel mentioned like certain ones are more taxing on your voice. If you're doing like a reel or a bunch of them in succession, you want to put like, the ones that are taxing your voice at the end. Like, if I ever do a Cat Williams in a slew of them, that'll be at the end. Because he's, like, super just like, I used to be a real funny comedian, and then I started smoking crack, and now I am crazy. My God, Cat Williams, everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And, like, it's, you know. I could feel that in my throat when you Yeah, did. yeah. <laughs> that one is, um, and, like, you know, like, Gilbert Godfrey, like, hello, everybody, you know, like that. Here's another one that is crazy, you know, so. Yeah. Save that for the end for sure. Yeah. I think it, it's better when you, when you put it into some kind of framework like that, that. That's usually the way I'll package it because if, if you have all the celebrities talking about one subject, you know, like Sarah Silverman, like, I totally support Bruce Jenner, you know, but I hate that a 64-year-old woman has a fresher vagina than me. And then you've got like Joan Rivers going like, I'm just so depressed that I'm not gonna live to see Bruce Jenner spend all his money on my QVC jewelry. You know, and then like one after the other and I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> I, a lot of people have Sarah Silverman joke or uh, impressions and I love that they also have really good Sarah Silverman-esque jokes. Like that's yeah. a solid Sarah Silverman joke that she would actually right? tell. Yeah, yeah. I, I think getting the tone of what she would say is, is almost more important than the impression itself. Have there ever been an has there ever been an impression that you've given up on that you've been like I just can't I can't nail this one down it's not working for me? Given up on you? I I've been trying to do Adam Sandler for years for some reason I can't get that one down which is weird I guess cuz I almost kind of look like him I've been told. <laughs> and that's like the one that I can't get. But yeah, maybe one day. You know. What version of, of, of Adam? Are you trying to do like the nice I want to do them all, the, man. Like, the, I want to do them like, you know. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, there's the talking Adam Sandler, which is like, eh, 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 eh. but it, 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 you can't just go off that, you know, you got to have, you know, but, and then there's like the, uh, you know, the yelling Adam Sandler, which is like, shut up! And it's like, you know. That wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but, not as good as Cat Williams, but like it was you know, a pretty good impression. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you know, I'm working on it. Maybe, maybe I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> one day you'll have you'll have the Adam Sandler. Maybe one day. <laughs>
Oh, and do you have one that you've ever... Uh, I, I really like to talk like Ellen, but I, I'm not sure if I, it, it, it's quite there yet. There's a lot of stumbling and mumbling. Sometimes it's it, great, but other times, like, Portia says no. So, I, you know, it's not quite there. There's a nugget of it, but it's not my best. Oh, one more that I really have always wanted to do, just because I love this guy's voice, Jeremy Irons. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because growing up, The Lion King, Uncle Scar, that was, like, my movie... And, uh, yeah, like, I... I Jeremy yeah, I just, You're just not looking hard enough! You know, like, that. oh, shit. That's, it's not bad. Oh. Yeah. That was close. Yeah, no. that's all right. <laughs> I'd also like to do Oprah, because everybody, the women who I've seen do Oprah, they just do the yelling Oprah, like, you get a car, and you get a car! Oprah's his Right? But, like, anybody can do that, but the very specific, like, you know, I was talking to Stedman, and Gail and I went out on a date because I'm actually a lesbian. <laughs> that Oprah is the Have one. Have you ever I seen like. the Oprah bread commercial? Yeah, oh, I love bread. Yeah. <laughs> No. I, 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 was, I would watch that on repeat, like a full, full day. Well, somebody made her. a gif of it, right? It's yeah, amazing. It's I love bread. I love, I love bread. It. So great. Love it. How I you... love bread! <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys start with the impressions? Is there someone that you want to do an impression of? Is it you sort of pick a thing there or pick an attribute that you can kind of focus on and build out from there? Like yeah. If you were going to do an impression of me, what <laughs> was an attribute you would focus on? <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, for no, there's <laughs> nothing. No, it's true. There's <laughs> nothing here. <laughs> there's, well, you should take comfort in that fact because it's like if you don't have, you know, I, I always see a character or something strange or a funny voice or a cadence or a rhythm that I just latch onto and I'm fascinated with it and I feel compelled to repeat it. I'm not feeling that way with you. <laughs> but maybe, maybe Jason. Well, is. yeah, I mean, that goes back to like, uh, I guess. There's got to be a specific thing yeah. that, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I got good at Trump just by accident because I used to do him before he started running for president, but it, it was all right. And then, like, you'd just be on TV so much, and I was like, I'd watch the campaign like all of us. You know, we're all glued to the TV, the debates and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I just got better just because, you know, look, look, folks, frankly, okay, believe me, all right, look, we're going to build a wall, okay, all right. These are my people, clapping, you know. So, yeah. He just has so many cadences, and he's so, like, unself-aware that uh, he's a lot of fun. Well, the minute, he, the minute he started running, every impressionist and wannabe impressionist came out of the woodwork to, to right. do him because he's got so much to draw from, whereas, you know, a lot, there's a lot of regular people walking around that really don't have anything to latch on to, you know? So I, I think you should be happy about <laughs> I don't even, I personally don't even believe he actually wants, like, to be president. Like, I feel like he just wanted to sell some ties. Ties? And now, yeah, ties. Trump yeah, ties. Trump ties, baby. And uh, that's evolved now into, like, him, like, if you watched his interviews, like, I, I feel like he purposely tries to fuck up. Like, even, at, like, oh my God, yeah. you know? Like, they were like, Mr. Trump, you were endorsed by the KKK. Would you like to disavow this endorsement? He's just like, look, I've never heard of this KKK. Okay. <laughs> And for all I know, they could be doing wonderful things, okay? This is the moron I'm running against. <laughs> to make America great again. <laughs> yes. It's like having your, uh, it's going to be four years of your school teacher yelling at you. Get the paints and the smock and line up. <laughs> Recess is in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's your interpretation of Hillary. That's what she sounds like. I say, school teacher constantly yelling at me. You know what I mean? Get your books out of the cubbies. Get your raincoats out and line up. <laughs> That's all I hear. It's always a, there's the Hillary. Uh, that was amazing. There's the Hillary laugh as well, that punk. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, so. laughs> My friends. You're all fucked. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna open up to the audience for some questions. Anyone have any questions out there? Hi, um, I was wondering how long it takes you guys to perfect an impression. Um, 
It doesn't take me long. I, and I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I don't really uh, work. I, I just can hear something and sort of repeat it back, and maybe I'll refine it a little bit. But uh, if I hear something I think I can do, I'll usually uh, record it a couple of times. And if I think I have it, then I got it. And if I don't, I, I probably just leave it. I would say some come quick, like almost instantaneous, and then some a matter of weeks, sometimes months, where I'm just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And oddly enough, anytime it's like difficult like that, I always get it when I'm in the shower. Oh, like I literally be in the shower, just like like Obama. Like when, I was like, I think when he was first running, so I had to be like 16 or something. And I'm in there, and I'm like, we need to do what we need to do, what we need to do. And I'm like, ah, yes, that's it. And then I literally like run out and like chase my whole family down. I'm like, listen, how does it sound? How does it get their feedback and stuff? So yeah, I don't know if it's like the acoustics in there or just like, you know, more relaxed or whatever. But yeah. And they were like, we heard you in the shower. It's creepy enough in there. We don't need to hear it again here. <laughs> the echo sounds amazing in all, for all impressions in the bathroom yes. and the shower. I know. <laughs> it does. Uh, next question. Hello, guys. Hi. Pleasure you to be here. So what was your uh, favorite all-time comedians, all-time, when you, when you uh, grew up that resonated with you in your uh, career? Uh, well, growing up, uh, like the dude who would inspire me with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I got to say Eddie Murphy, too. I mean, I... I <laughs> would Im do impressions of his impressions, and I think your Bill Cosby is, there's a little yeah, bit of that in there, bit. too. And, you know, lemonade, that cool, refreshing drink, like <laughs> when he was doing whoever he was doing. But, yeah, Eddie Murphy, for sure, and um, George Carlin, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. I always loved Eddie Murphy's impression of when Bill Cosby called him and told him to stop being so filthy. Yeah. So he called With Richard Pryor. Filth, flarn, flarn, filth. Yeah. <laughs> then he called Richard Pryor to tell him that Bill Cosby called him, and Richard Pryor said, you tell that motherfucker. <laughs> tell Bill to have a Coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, next question. Hey, Rachel, why Hi. do you think so few women do impressions? Yeah, I have a theory about this. Well, I think it's because America, America raises women to be pretty, not funny. <laughs> Seriously, I, I think that's true. And... Um, I don't, I would love a study to be done to see if they can't do them or if they just, because you got to make yourself ugly to do impressions. You can't be concerned with what you look like. You got to make ugly faces. You got to be willing to, you know, not look so great. And I don't know if a lot of women want to do that. Um, and also, I just really don't think that they've been guided towards comedy as much as men, which is why you don't see as many women in general doing it. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I'd love to know if it's a thing that comes as naturally to women as men or if it's just a cultural thing. So I really don't know. Uh, next question. Last one. Hi, guys. Um, I was wondering if there's ever been a time where you've done an impression of a celebrity for that celebrity and maybe they haven't reacted too well. Yes. I, <laughs> I did Donald Trump in front of Donald Trump. And, uh, yeah. I, uh, I actually, I went to his book signing for that purpose, too, and it worked out, and I got on TV, and he loved it, because I feel like he likes anyone who likes him, like anyone. Like, you could be like a, like a pedophile and be like, look, I got this pedophile's endorsement, okay? Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but he, uh, it, it was really cool, because they had, yeah, they had like one camera on me, one camera on him, so they like showed me and then his reaction and he, he liked it a lot, so wow. it was cool. Hey, yeah. that's me, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Anything about him he loves, even if you're doing his Right, voice. exactly. <laughs> I never did that. The, co the closest I came was, um, I, I, I make a lot of videos on Instagram and, uh, of impressions and then I'll tweet them to the celebrities that I'm doing. <laughs> so I've tweeted, to, I've tweeted Rosie O'Donnell to Rosie O'Donnell and she's hearted and retweeted some of them. So I guess, I guess it's okay. Can I hear your Rosie O'Donnell? Of course you can. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a cutie? I would eat you up for dinner even though I'm a lesbian. <laughs> I love your shoes. <laughs> Uh, well, guys, thank you so much for being here. First thank you. you. Uh, Rachel, your episode is next Tuesday, right? Tuesday night, 1030. Tune in. Tune in to see some more of Rachel's impressions. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you.